Hi, this is Hong Kong Design Book Club, and I'm Soyeon. Welcome to our Design Book Review episode number eight. Today, we are going to review Designing Together by Dan M. Brown. We'll talk about some conflicts that designers can experience, how we can recognize and deal with the situation, and how we can be a better contributor on the team. As a designer, even though I really enjoy my job, it can't be all happy and shiny every day. Sometimes stakeholders or other members don't appreciate my work, ignore my efforts, or exclude me from team activities. When these things happen, it's easy to be emotional rather than calm down and analyze the situation. And the more dissatisfaction I have, the more difficulties I have on my job. This book really helps us rationally grasp the situation that we're in by offering the frameworks and patterns of designers' collaborative work process. Designing together is defining and dissecting the concepts that we think we know but not able to perfectly describe what they are. It starts with five central ideas, which are behavior, mindset, self-reflection, empathy, and design success. If you look into mindset, it is a person's perception of attitude toward and desired reaction to the world around them. It encompasses perception, how one interprets circumstances, attitude, how one reacts to one's perception of the circumstances, and disposition, how one intends to behave based on one's attitude. Mindset can be fixed or growth and the best mindset for designers is adaptive, collective, and assertive. With these definitions, we can use clear and shared language, such as try to have a collective attitude, feel more confident when teammates have provided feedback, rather than how many times should I tell you to listen to other people. From chapter 1 to 8, the book keeps defining and dissecting the concepts such as conflict, resolution, situations, collaboration, etc. Chapter 9 to 12 looks like a dictionary with all the patterns of situations, traits, conflicts, and behaviors. Anyone who has a certain length of a design career can really enjoy this list because they will remind you of your past experiences. What about late breaking requirements, lack of stable strategy, distracted by shiny objects, task and goals not aligned, unfound design direction. Sound familiar? Late breaking requirements. Now that I think about it, we are also going to need most design processes spend at least a little time establishing requirements up front. Through this process, design team can identify most requirements. More importantly, they can quash any late-breaking requirements. Still, late-breaking requirements occur. The stakeholder who didn't have time to participate in the process. The one thing that one guy forgot. A change to the business that has a ripple effect throughout all the company's systems. There's one more thing that really stressed me out in the past, but at the time I didn't have a name for that trait. When I joined this big company, people suddenly came to me and asked, have you ever created lean canvas? And they just started to draw the lean canvas for every business the company owned. But in my understanding, their businesses are all very stable and the cost structure and revenue stream they're already well established. So why Lean Canvas now? What is this religion of Lean Canvas? After reading this book, I totally understood what that was. It was dogmatism. Dogmatism. Proper methodology calls for. Some designers demand strict adherence to methodology. They insist that people follow the letter of the method exactly. They stole projects that deviate from the textbook methodology. They confront designers who have employed the methodology in a different way. What's perhaps more dangerous about methodological dogmatism is the belief 
that a particular methodology is one size fits all. Dogmatic designers don't compromise their process, but they also don't acknowledge that their process isn't appropriate for every project. There were two things that really made me think. One is about saying no. I realized I didn't really try to say no in my career. I had worked in Japan for a long time, and in Japanese culture, if you achieve something that looked almost impossible, you're a hero. I started to think that's why I never tried to push back and always worked hard and late to finish something that's obviously too much, to please other people. However, this book shows the importance of saying no. It was such an eye opener for me. While saying no may be disappointing to other members of the team, it preserves the integrity of the contributor. One's ability to say no is strongly dependent on the three basic elements that hold teams together. Humility. The contributor isn't trying to prove anything. Respect. The contributor knows that project organizers respect his or her judgment in determining capacity to work on additional tasks. Empathy. The contributor knows that project organizers understand him or her and recognize that forcing additional work will be counterproductive. And another thing that made me think is the difference between healthy and unhealthy conflict. We know designers must take constructive criticism and have an open mind, but not all criticism is rational and professional, and sometimes it feels like a personal attack. Then the defense mechanism works, and it can turn into a blame game. But we can convert this pointless arguing into a productive conversation by redirecting the topic. You can even respond like "Let's start at the top" or "Let me walk you through" to the feedback such as "This sucks" or "I don't like it." All the jerks I've encountered drive on reactions. Emotion sets their anxiety at ease. They've shifted focus away from their inadequacy or ignorance, setting it squarely on their opponent's shoulders. Once you've depersonalized this person's attack, it becomes a starting point for a real conversation. That's it for today. Enjoy our other book reviews, such as Radical Focus by Christina Wattke and Thoughts on Design by Paul Rand. If you liked this episode, please like it and subscribe us. Thank you for listening.